Have we achieved anything in this podcast? Yeah, you've got a t-shirt and a pin. Waffling waste of time. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a blustery day in Lincolnshire for Pistons. Uh, the <laughs> Pistons, the podcast. The um, award-winning podcast. We've not won any awards. Um, <laughs> fil filmed in Lincolnshire on the East Coast. Um, it's the September Roundup. And a bit of a catch-up, because we've not done a Pistons for a little while, due to reasons you'll find out. How are you? I'm very good. You look <laughs> very small in comparison. Can um, we just address the small. fact why we've regressed with the studio? We had some lovely chairs. I've put my garden all... chairs away for winter. They're all wrapped up <laughs> down the side of the bungalow, covered up. But how have you ended up with a lovely, nice bench, and I'm sat on an IKEA step stool? The IKEA step stool's stronger than the bench. I suppose it could be worse. I could be sat on the pop crates. No, pop crates are all right. Nothing wrong with pop crates. You're okay, though? Very good, thank you. It's starting to get to a point where I'm wishing we had an indoor studio space, as opposed to the garage with the door open. Anyway, um, before we start the podcast proper, 11,000 subscribers, thank you. Excellent. 11,000 people subscribe to the channel, which I think is... That's a lot of sardines. It is a lot of sardines. We'll talk about sardines in uh, the and Rustival the Roundup, which is coming in a separate podcast, but more about that later. We shall start the podcast as we normally do, which is with presents. I have presents, of course. We, know, we don't normally start it like that. Uh, well, how do we normally start it? What's in the workshop? All right, then we'll skip presents then and do what's in the workshop, which is Peugeot clearly very obvious. Why is the Peugeot 406? Because it's gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so normally we would have uh, something from our fleet, or my fleet in the workshop, I was going to bring the Micra, uh, but the Peugeot is here. Tell us then, we've skipped presents uh, to what's in the workshop. The Peugeot's gone wrong. Yeah, but what, what? It's got a twang, twang, twang when you turn the steering. All right, okay. I'm going to have to get up now and leave. Uh, well, <laughs> see ya, thanks for coming. Why have you got <coughs> up and, and, and leaving? Oh. Oh dear. <laughs> See that little bit of my top mountain? It's crowded away and when the weight's on it, the bearing doesn't work properly. Is that the top mounting that we've replaced? No, it's not. It's one I didn't replace. Well, we'll talk about that then, So I'm I going to have to replace him. In another episode. So they put, I got up this morning and took the old girl to bits. A separate video will be coming of talking about the Peugeot top mountings. Did you expect that though? Well, well, I know something was not right with it because it kept going twang, twang, twang. It's not dangerous, but it's just annoying me, so I took it to bits. Big problem? No, I'm going to fork out for a new top mount, isn't it? Mm. Fair enough. So that is coming. So what's in the workshop this week? Peugeot 406 Estate, again. What was that picture? Did you create that picture of that no. lowered Peugeot 406 Estate? I'll insert the picture here for you to have a look at. Isn't that cool? No, not really, but... It's, it's a slammed Peugeot 406 estate. I think it's in somewhere like Denmark or something like that. It seems strange to have chosen this green. But it is is—it is a real thing. It looks AI. It looks like an AI generated I thought you created it. No, 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 no. It's a real thing. Yeah. Um, so maybe we could... It's just a future, strange choice of colour was that green. I think the Peugeot Sport Club are wanting a car at... Uh, the Bista Heritage or something like that. Oh no, the Haynes Motor Museum. Oh yeah. And uh, they're looking for one. No. Lots of people have suggested yours, but I don't think it's... Um, it doesn't leave Lincolnshire anymore. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't epitomise the Peugeot Sport Club, in my opinion. Not really, does Anyway, it? we shall move on from Peugeot 406. Finally, to presents. Dun, da, 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 da. Which one do you want first? Do you want this one or the two that's in my bag? Let's have a look at this one, see if right. it's here. We've been sent this by the team at uh, Kent Faith after they saw just how impressed you were with the one from Lidl. What's that, a defibrillator thing? It, it could be, it could be a, I don't know, a, what's it called, a CPAP machine. Feast your eyes on that, my friend. Well, that's a fancy lunchbox, isn't it? Have a look at what's that. What's in there? Then? Well, you open it and find out and show the good people. As I say, we've been sent this by the team at Kent Faith to have a play with. What is it? What have? What is it? What is it? Have a look at it. Ah! Ah! It's an orifice inspector. Do not insert into orifices. 
It is. Look at the length of that blending thing. Kent Faith Endoscope. I think that's something like 25 oh, meters long. Oh, we could have a look down the drains. We, oh, yes. We could, mm, I don't know. Can you put that on YouTube? <laughs> I have to give it a good flush. Well, I've first. seen them doing. Yeah, I've seen them doing it on drains. But oh, that, we could. We could shove it in there. Yeah. And go all the way. All to the way to the road. No, not to the road. Intra that 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 would be not very nice. That end, would it? This side, it's just the washing machine and stuff. There you go. So we've. Been, oh, cool. We have been sent that. It is something we've been sent to try out. I think really we should be putting it inside the sill of a car and having a look inside it, shouldn't well, we? Well, we can do all sorts of stuff with it. But hold it up. Show the good people. What it is? No, you don't hold that. I just hold the whole thing up. Whole thing. Yeah, show the good people. Look, whole thing. Yeah. Has it got batteries in it then, or is it? Ch oh, you charge it up. Or I've got no idea. But anyway, it's coming to the channel. Us having a play about with that. That is after the um, the viral video of you playing with a little one. Yeah, we haven't investigated the little one fully yet. I mean, that's a lot more money than forty quid. Is it much better? We shall soon find out. Can't wait to get this stuffed in somewhere. So what's that for? <laughs> oh, it's for doing downloads and stuff, I think, is it? Yeah. Uploads and downloads. Well, you're, you're the technological genius on this job, aren't you? But no doubt no. it'll need char charging and stuff, won't it? Oh, there's some instructions in there. Uh, no. Yeah. Hey, I can't even read that Oh, book. dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Can somebody send us a magnifying glass, please? <laughs> oh, you can read it. Let's have a look, quick look, let's have a look at the model number, see what it's called. Hmm. It's the AGC430. Well, I first saw it, I thought it was a little scanner. Industrial it's... endoscope. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this can be applied to various fields. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm going to start with the one that we would probably be using it for. Vehicle repair. Yep. Yeah. Uh, machinery. Yeah. Pipeline inspection. Yep. Yeah. Lock removal and repair. And then this one, I think we actually do need to go and do. This is, the, this is what we need to do with this. Deep cave exploration. <laughs> there ain't no caves around Lincolnshire. I go caving in Lincolnshire with Dad. Can you remember when you was a little boy and we went in one of those tunnels under the road that went in from the dike to Sibsy the drain? Sibsy Trader. I don't know where it was. But it's worrying me that the instructions in English are two and a half pages long. How's your Mandarin? I don't like any of them sort of satsumas wrote like that, really. Anyway, we'll be playing with that. That's oh. something we've been sent from Kent Faith. Did you know, I did, I did really, when someone mentioned about doing body panels, I thought, yeah, that's a blooming good idea, really. Having a look to see what you can see. Yeah. We shall soon find out. Anyway, we haven't got time. Early to... warning. This is purely a, here's a present, let's crack on. Because we've got lots more stuff to look at. You're always in such a hurry. Well, people don't want to watch us waffling on for 70 minutes. They want a 20 minute thank you and gone. So let's move on then Where's to... my drink? I beg your pardon. Well, the... hey, this is empty. Well, oh. say it's empty, it's nearly empty. Hmm. Uh, let's move on to presents. Now... I don't normally believe in matchy-matchy. You know when you see people that dress their twins up in matching outfits, or husbands and wives wear matchy-matchy. Yeah. But I had to get us these. You've got the large, and I've got the extra, extra large. But there it is, the Parkside Tools T-shirt. <laughs> from, where do you think that's from? Of course it's from the middle of Lidl. When are we going to wear these when we go to a car show? We're going to wear these, I don't know, maybe for the next Pistons, the podcast. Well, let it be over the freeze, top of, let it the top of my thermals. I shan't be smiling like that, gentlemen, anyway. But I shall be shivering. What do you reckon to those? It's well, I think, side. I think, well, I, I did look at this workwear and I thought to myself, who would wear this? Of me and you, my <laughs> oh, friend. Oh, my giddy aunt. It's got an inspirational quote on here. The right tool for every project, the right choice for every occasion. With Parkside, you got this. And it's got a reciprocating saw on the front. Do you know, I have an awful feeling looking at that after the first wash, you've just got a black T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw that in the middle of Lidl. In fact, no, that's a lie. Mrs. John Coupland saw that in the middle of Lidl, and she said, you should get your dad one of those. Uh, 
So I got me and you matching t-shirts, but they're pure cotton. Uh, it's fitted style with a round neck. I know you're not a V-neck man. It's oh, a round cool. neck. And they got nice small arms to make me guns look big. <laughs> Hopefully not, because that'll make my love handles look big. But there it is. There mm. is the Parkside Smart. Tools. And we've got matchy, matchy uh, T-shirts now. What do you reckon? I think it's called Twee, isn't it? Twinning? Twee. Twee. <laughs> Very twee. Me and your mum could go out wearing the same... Uh, do, you, do you like the T-shirt? Well, I do I, bit? mate. I'm always, I'm always into something different. Which leads us on nicely. Don't wait till next bloody summer to wear them now. <laughs> <laughs> to the next present, which is is also about holiday chat. Uh, Mrs. John Cooper and I have just arrived back from the wonderful world of Florida. What is this holiday you speak so highly of? You've had time off. Don't give me that. Uh, so we've had uh, two and a bit weeks in Florida, seeing Mickey Mouse. It's cost me a lot of money, but uh, it's kept Mrs. John Cooper happy. Um, I'm going to insert a clip here of some of our time at Disney World. Ooh. Let's go! Come on! <laughs> oh, oh, no, don't bump! You're not allowed to do that! I knew it would be the end of time! They shouldn't stop! Road rage over here! Aren't uh, we lucky we have been to Disney World? What's Dad done? Well, he drove to Gatwick four times. How was the drive to Gatwick? Shite. <laughs> we went in the... Oh, the traffic's traffic. awful it's these horrible, days. Isn't it? It's It's absolutely admit, horrible. We spent 24 hours travelling home, and the worst part of the journey was the four hours if, back Everywhere in you go, you've got roadworks, blooming 40 mile an hour restrictions. But... I've brought you a little piece of Disney magic home. And you're going to you're going to like this. Talking about Disney. Yeah. I watched the Simpsons and stuff on Disney. Right. And I did I was watching Family Guy last night. Yes. And the warning on the program all the way through the program in the top left-hand corner, warning contains flashing images. That's a fair thing. Contains tobacco references. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't have that. But people can see that half the world's blowing each other up and Disney are concerned that somebody might say the word cigarette. Yes, <laughs> they are. Well, you've got to be hey. careful, haven't you? But it's funny you should say that because that links us in nicely to what is in my hand, which is, well, again, Mrs. John Cooper spotted this and picked it up and said, I'm getting this for your father. Oh, cool. Take a look at this. There's a thing in Disney World. It's all about pins, you know, pin badges. Right. This one is for you. Oh, oh, that's me, that is. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. We saw that's that. what I said about that oil company who used to be brilliant and then messed me about for a long while. Thumper's Theory. That's good, isn't it? Thought you might like If you're that. watching Carousel Car Parts, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Mrs. John Kitten saw that and thought, do you know what? Oh, I like that. We'll get that for your dad. Yeah, because I think that's a nice thing to say. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything. Just think the horrible things you're thinking. No, it's no good being horrible to one another, even if you feel like doing it. So you can wear that now. You can put it on your, I don't know, my motorbike jacket or something. <laughs> The people yeah. walk around with lanyards full of them at Disney. There's a whole thing about it. It's pin trading or something like what? that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like $15 each. So people are trading them all sorts of time. But, yeah, that's for you. That's sensible, that is. I think that is a flipping good idea. In fact, this winter, I shall have it on my hat in the shed. Oh, cool. I like that. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Thank you for that, Mrs. John Copeland. That's a nice, a nice sentiment, I always think, that is. Shall we move on from presents to exciting things? Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Not as exciting as my day yesterday when I went to my auntie's 100th birthday party a day early, <laughs> a week early. <laughs> yes, yes, I was aware that you went to a birthday party a week early. We won't talk about that. <laughs> All these people in the comments, your dad's a genius. What a legend your dad is. Can't go to a birthday party on the right day. At least I wasn't late. Anyway, this is... Uh, Something that's also dated weird. I don't get this. Magazines do it a month in advance. This is October's edition of Car Magazine. That'll have come out last month. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, this is a September roundup and it's October. I don't get it. Anyway, um, a car that we own is in this magazine. Now it's Ferrari versus Lambo. We don't have a Ferrari or a Lambo, but if you turn... To hey, I'm a Ferrari enthusiast. To page yeah. 116, you may spot a purple, a purple smart, smart car, car. That, uh, that I own. This uh, is from an event that I did. I do you know, if I'm looking at the front of that thing, do you know what I... I've seen that in the distance, I go, oh, no, KGM. <laughs> so I um, spent a day with Jake Groves, who is the, I think he's the deputy editor of the magazine, uh, and he invited me to bring my Purple Smart down to um, Peterborough and test out this Smart Hashtag One. You've got to call it the Hashtag One, but oh, it's right written no. like the number, you know, number one. Yeah. I would have thought it would be Smart Number One or Smart One. No, 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 it's called the hashtag one, and it's not a smart car. And that's pretty much what I say in the article. But he drives my car, I drive his car, and it's a, it's a lovely ride. Did he like, say, Christ, it goes like shit off a stick? Uh, what, well, my car? Yeah. His exact words about my car are, getting to drive John's 4.2 is a reminder at just how clever smart used to be. The packaging remains deeply impressive, and the innovation is still obvious to this day. Innovation, yeah. My words were, were John Cooper arrived and said, well, it ain't a smart car, is it? That's pretty much what I said. But if you want to read that, um, it's an... In, well, it's in, still made by Mercedes then, no doubt, is it? Uh, or is it It's not? manufactured in China. Yeah. Uh, it's an EV. That's why it looks like a KGM. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, brand new in 2004, a Smart 4.2 would have cost you about... Eight or nine grand. Right. Yeah. That was, How yeah. much do you think the brand new smart hashtag one is? Full 45. Well, yeah, yeah, 40 grand, the one that I tested. Yeah, yeah. Look at the size of it in comparison. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I think the takeaway is it's not a smart car. But that's, uh, that's oh, right, in the car it. magazine. It would it nice to drive. Yeah. Yeah. Was it quiet? Yeah. Was it as nice as Suzuki Swift petrol? No. Um, was it better than a KGM Tivoli? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Check it out. But I'm quite impressed because that is the first time I've had my car in a feature. I tell you what I have not investigated it, but there's people on the YouTubes now are doing the batteries on electric cars. What are they doing to them? Putting fresh cells in. On, they, they've got a Nissan Leaf. Leaf and they're doing the battery. I'm going to investigate. I can't share the photograph because I can't tell you where it came from. But I've got photographs that have been sent to me from a uh, top secret location of a battery being replaced on a brand new Mercedes EV. Yeah. And uh, that was done under warranty. I think it's cost the garage something like well, 35 no, like, oh, grand. Yeah. We, we had the equipment sent to change batteries. They sent us this. But it's this whole big cell. It's like the whole oh, yeah, floor. It's this big. Oh, no, no, this is like the oh, size of bigger. the car. Yeah. Like the platform down. for doing a Nissan was this big. Yeah, This no. thing that you put under it. But why are we... We're going to upset people by talking about EVs. Why? Why are... Why are we replacing batteries? Well, there's just things... That, things go wrong. I suppose things we're, go wrong. I suppose we replace engines on the warranty as well. Anyway, uh, but that is in the car magazine, October 2024. Would I have one? No. We'll talk about EVs in a separate video, I think, because a lot of people I know are currently buying two or three-year-old Hyundai Ionics, mm. and they're a bargain. <laughs> I think most cars are a bargain at the minute, aren't they? It's, I'm really tempted to buy one, because it makes sense. It does. I could get to work and back for something like seven pence. So if you used to chain, well, you work funny hours though, don't you? But if you was to change your tariff so you got a cheap overnight thing like we used to have in the old economy could, seven days. I could get 200 miles for six pounds. Yeah. It, it does make sense. I'm anyway. just interested to see what they do with the old roading tax though. The last thing I need yeah. is another car. Yeah. But Hyundai Ionic, you can pick a two year old one up for 10 grand with 5,000 miles on the clock and get 200 miles range out of it. It does make sense, but as you say, road tax is going to be the killer there. 
I could get away with blooming worn out and missing leaf. <laughs> Go to the gym and back. Yeah. Oh, I need to charge it up now. I would do because I'm afraid I should always want to be using that maximum. <laughs> I want to be a Tesla driver. I think it's called direct acceleration. I leave everybody for dead. I can you put it in sport mode? Talking about Tesla drivers, that leads us on nicely to the Rustival. Remember that Wally in, in his Tesla behind me in my micro that was bullying me? Yeah. Um, we oh. went to the Rustival last week. What was it, the 24th of September? The Rustival 2. Again, we're doing a full video on this, a full Rustival roundup. But um, we took Nissan Micra. We well did. How did that go? It was all right, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it got it all right, back. mate. It used nearly a full tank of petrol. It was a bit thirsty. Um, yeah, what, how many miles did we do? Oh, 200 miles, something like that. It was a bit thirsty then, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we had a good time. But you was driving it like a Wally. You mm. was racing Teslas. I wasn't wasn't racing Teslas, I wasn't driving it like a Wally, but it wasn't driven in its usual format, such as 30 miles an hour everywhere. <laughs> no, it was on the motorway. It was, it was travelling at 70 miles an hour on It the liked being driven at 70 more than it did at 30. But it was a better journey than going to Gatwick, anyway. Yeah. There weren't so many roadworks. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Anyway, a full Rustival roundup is coming to the channel, but if you haven't seen the Rustival video, check the Rustival video out first. Uh, we had a good day. It's always a good day at Rustival. I think they're on to something with the Rustival. Sort of like the beginning and the end of the car season, inclusive. We got parked next to a Ferrari and people were more interested in the Micra. Uh, well, no, well, I think they put us out of the way, so we, we, we the fenced us off. We were hidden a little bit. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we had a good day and I uh, hope you enjoyed the Rustival too. And at the Rustival, you met Alan Simpson. Yep. Sardine uh, legend. I did, and I've had the sardines for lunch, breakfast this morning. You and they it? were lovely, thank you, Alan. <laughs> sardines, thank you very they much. They were very nice. Tesco's finest, he, he bought me the best. I wonder how much a tin of Tesco finest sardines are. Well, you can, I don't care, they were absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks, they were Alan. the best sardines I've had for a while. They were good. Right, we need to crack on yeah, because crack we're waffling. On, really. uh, oh no, what, what did that person tell me to do? Uh, time wasting time, wafflers. Uh, time wasting wafflers. That's exactly what we are. Let's discuss then everything we did in September 2024. As you can remember. Well, this is sort of a cheat because we, we did things and then it sort of covered September. So we had an issue with the Smart 451. Let's talk about the Smart 451 work then. Not only did we fit a subwoofer, to the Smart 451, which quite a few people said, you've put it on upside down. Uh, it, we didn't put it on upside down, did we? No. Um, we got the details from Mercedes in the end. Thanks, uh, Thanks Sam. Sam. Um, we fitted the subwoofer to the Smart. It was 50 odd quid. It was a waste of 50 odd quid, to be honest with you. Um, so, but we've done it so you don't have to. That was the first thing we did. Then I spent <laughs> 30 pounds on some tweeters which there's not a video on it because there's no point, but I fitted tweeters to the Smart 451. Guess what? That was a waste of 30 quid as well. They really are useless. man's replaced your faulty one, has he? I got sent a faulty one. Um, we've, we've replaced that. Uh, interestingly though, Mercedes, these tiny little tweeters, literally they're about that big. They're about the size of a two pound coin. They look like an earbud nearly. Wanted 160 pounds each for them. So I paid £30 for two. So the fact that I've had to get one swapped out is not an issue. Uh, we regassed the aircon on the Smart 451. And we'll come oh. back to that because we'll talk about that more in a minute. But the major issue with the Smart 451, tell us, what did we have? I forgot, mate. We had a swimming pool in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's old, that's old news, isn't it? Um, it was the aircon, wasn't it, that leaked? The, the aircon drain tube. The evaporator drain tube with blocks, yes. That was a good morning's work, though. What have we got coming up with the 451? You tell me, Grommet. Well, we've got a six month update. Uh, I've driven it quite a long way yeah. since I bought it. So I bought it on the 1st of April. So actually, I've now had the car more than six months. And Touchwood, apart from the drain issue, it's going well. It's not burning oil, is it? I've checked the oil. No. 
we haven't had to replace the um, spark plugs. Uh, <laughs> come in, come, come and tell us. I've got to go and get this. <laughs> uh, waiting in the wings is the production team. <laughs> the production team have given me notes. Notes. <laughs> I need to do a correction now. Rustable 2 was the 28th and not the 24th, as advertised a moment ago. <laughs> Thanks, mother. <laughs> so, yeah, mum's, mum's held up this sign. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> getting, getting a bit fussy about dates now after <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> after going to the, the birthday party a, a week early. We've, so, okay, apologies. It was the 28th and not the 24th. I like that. I like the live correction. How hey, does she know you said that then? No idea. Must have been listening. Listening in. I tell you, it's it's not just me and you now. We've got a whole production team. Is the lighting good, Jeff? Yeah, yeah lighting's good. <laughs> uh, where were we? So Smart 451, work to do includes a six-month roundup, having a check off. I want to look at the uh, Tetra seal we put on it. See if that's disappeared or if the What's rust proofing is... What's that on the purple one? That one, the Smart 4 Oh, one. right. Oh, the orange one. So that's still... Cool. All the cars just melt into one now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the aircon recharge then, which, yeah. we, which we touched on. Ta-da! Yeah. We recharged the air conditioning... Still working. ...on the Peugeot 406. That was a... a subject that I wanted to approach with caution. Because a lot of people felt very strongly about the fact that you probably so shouldn't I. be able to go and buy air con refrigerant off the shelf. But we have done. You obviously have an FGAS certificate, so you're okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. But random folk can go to the Hulfords and buy a yeah. £70 tin and just pssst if you the want, air. If you look, you can go and eBay and, eBay and buy a 20 litre container of it. Mm. But we recharged the it's, Peugeot yeah. 406 and it's going well. It's not their fault, it's, they're not breaking the rules, you are by yeah. doing it. I suppose that's the loophole, isn't it? Yeah. But the kit that we used, you were happy with? <laughs> it, it fixed it, didn't and it? And it's done the job. The takeaway really though is, it's probably cheaper to knit down to Dave it at, the, at the garage and get it done. Yeah. So that was our takeaway on that. Check that video out if you fancy it. Um, we touched on it also, wheel arch repairs. Oh, or, the helper. We spent a long time working on your Peugeot last month. We? You. Uh, wheel arch repairs on the 406. We had a three day, we had like a, I'd never done this before. We had three days of videos. Day one, day two, day three, in a, in a, in a, in well, a you sort just of around after work, didn't you? See what I've been doing. Uh, but you took, what, three days to repair it? Oh, Brumman did, mate. And you've- Three days solid hard graft. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, was it? You just did no. a bit here and there. Uh, you could have done it in an afternoon if you hadn't got to wait for stuff to dry and cure and yeah, cool down. time, mate, time. Um, how's the wheel arch repairs going? Don't come through again. <laughs> we'll be doing it again next year. I did a look at it. Looks a blooming treat. Excellent news. 406 wheel arch repairs. I, enjoy, I enjoyed documenting that. Good. It was easy for me. I just came around and went, oh, look at that. And then, and then, we broke TikTok with this. Napa timing chains. We replaced the timing chain in Mum's Hyundai i10. For those of you that haven't seen the video, what were the symptoms? Not the Simpsons, the symptoms. Don't. Funny little. Yeah, it was a. Yeah, uh, noise. Um, and it was getting worse. It got to the point where, it was, to put it in Lincolnshire terms, it was getting on my tits. Especially when you'd got the window open, going past parked cars and that, and it was reverberating back at you. You could tell that it was bad, because even Mum noticed it and went, well, it's been doing nice. it all the time we've had it, but yeah. it's just got worse. So you diagnosed it as the most likely probable issue being the timing chain. Yeah. So we replaced the timing chain yeah. on the Hyundai i10, and that was quite a fun couple of days. Um, but well, your mum timed us, and she says it was about five and a half hours. Mm, you'd be getting sacked if you was doing that in the garage. Why? I reckon the time to do a timing chain in the garage is what two hours. Yeah, no, two it'd be, hour. yeah, it would be. Yeah, two right. and a half hours. You're not talking the uh, bolts yeah. down, are you? you just um, well, that's not too bad then. What five and a half hours? Yeah, it's okay for me and you farting about. Well, yeah, filming and having cups of tea and sardines and. I don't know, Chinese in the middle. Um, yeah, it's going well. Yeah. 
fixed it. People were shouting at us about timing chains. You shouldn't have got a napper. Napper this, napper that, napper crapper. You'll be doing it again in a month. Well, if we are, we are, but so far so good. You've missed something. I cheated while you was in America, didn't I? I put a wheel bearing in this old girl. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. I was devastated. The Peugeot 406 had a new wheel bearing. We'll talk about that. I suppose in the Peugeot 406 video we're going to film later about you replacing top mountings. And I also got... I put a Napa wheel bearing in it. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. You should have been putting it. You'll be hey, replacing it in a month. The one that was in before was the cheapest one you can find on eBay and it lasted about 5,000 mile, if that. Oh. Well, you might get 6,000 out of your Napa. No, I should get more than that out of my Napa. What else have we done to the Hyundai? We did some brake discs, didn't we? Brake yeah, discs did, did some pads. pads. That video is coming to the channel uh, in the next few weeks. Also, God, we've been busy. Considering we've been on, I've been on holiday, we've, been, <laughs> we've had a busy couple of few weeks. Uh, the Fiat Doblo. Yeah, we ain't got to the bottom of that yet, have this we? This is winding me up, this is. It's got a horrible dum 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 noise upon braking. People are telling me it's suspension. People are telling me it's a warped disc. People are t uh, warped drum. People are telling me it's this. People are telling me it's that. It happened overnight. How? How did it happen overnight? Uh, or maybe I just noticed it overnight. Or maybe, I don't know. Anyway, we've still got it. There's there's a rift here because you're like, oh, I can't hear. I can't hear. Well, I can't hear it. Half the time, I can't hear it. You can hear it on the um, on the video. Interestingly. Haven't driven the van for about three weeks because I've been on holiday. Mm -hmm. I can't hear it again. Well, if you're not driving it, you're not hearing it, will you? <laughs> but now I've come back off holiday, I can't hear it. You've been to work in it a few times. I've, been, I've done 400 miles in it since I've been back and, and I can't hear it. it. No. So you just, just wanted a rest. It's intermittent, isn't it? But we've done the front brakes, we've done the rear brakes and... Coming soon, we've done the wheel alignment, which was fun. I enjoyed that one. Good. Uh, what else you got to tell us? What else you got coming up? Armstrong Sidley stuff. Yeah, we've got Armstrong Sidley stuff. There's tons mm. of that coming on. Yeah. There's some just on now, but it's not very interesting. I got Even I got bored with it. People don't like watching the Armstrong Sidley content. People aren't interested in just past and pre-war and post-war cars, in my opinion. Take it to a car show, people walk straight past it. Take a Proton, Ooh, people will come and have oh. a chat with me about it. Take the MR2, people are all over it. But it's post, just post-war, pre-war cars. Mrs John Cooten can sit there and go, he's going to come and talk to you about your car. And they do, and they're a certain demographic, which are, yeah. for lack of a better term, the old blokes. The old blokes. The older blokes come and have a chat. Oh, I used to drive London buses. Are they the ones that, have, when they've got behind their car, they've got a table and two chairs at the back of the car? Yes. Yes. And they don't go and look at the other cars, they just sit behind theirs. But do you know what? I am that, also that, that person is. at certain car shows. If they want to do that, they can do it. But not at the Rustival. No, Rustival's about going out and meeting the people that's there. So just to round up, September, the t you know I said we're going to have a, have a month off. It's been a busy month. Well, I, I, do, I was thinking about that. You told me oh, September was going to be my month off. Well, you're going on and holiday. You worked me day, like so. a dog. I think you'll find the inspector does not do much actual work. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add to this September roundup before we. We've had a lot of waffling today. It was, it's a lot of waffling, mm. wasn't it? Amateurs in the extreme. Anything else you want to add I'm before a, we finish? I think if I'm going to give it a roundup, a, a five out of ten for this one. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> Pretty poor. <laughs> Thanks to everyone genuinely who has subscribed to the channel. Like I said, 11,000 people. Thanks to everyone that's liked the videos. Thanks to everyone that comments because the comments are what keep it going. It's interesting to get other people's. Have we achieved anything in this podcast? Yeah, you've got a t shirt and a pin. Oh, that's all right. And we've talked about some of the work we've done and some of the stuff coming up. Did we mention any sardines? We mentioned sardines. That's right. Um, yeah, we won't talk about my weight gain whilst I've been on holiday. But well, that's your fault. You should have been staying to the dry toast and sardines like I do. Can't have toast, bad for you. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please. It was waffling. It was amateurish yeah. and extreme, but that is what we are. Waffling waste of time. Have Waff a great day. Waffling time wasters. Whatever you're getting up to, thanks for watching. See, See you later. Yeah, that was just a load of nonsense. It's bollocks, wasn't it? It was... <laughs>
That was just, just a load oh, of Oh, you're not filming still, are you? Yeah, 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 but it doesn't matter. Right, we're going to do the next bit now, which is uh, Rustival Roundup. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, we need to do our um, uh, uh, thumbs nail. Thanks for watching this latest episode of Pistons, the podcast. Another one is coming shortly, but if you haven't caught up yet, there's previous episodes on this page now. And don't forget to hit subscribe to always get caught up with the latest podcast.